Assalamualaikum uh, Well, as they have introduced me, I'm a musician and a teacher. And uh, teaching actually has been my first profession for the last 17 years. It's been 17 years that I've been working professionally as a teacher, but actually I started teaching a little earlier than that. In fact, if I remember it correctly, it was uh, 1989 when I graduated from a high school and uh, I needed a little more for my, um, uh, for my daily expenses so I thought I should start teaching. So I started teaching little kids, age group roughly 7 to 8 years, 3 to 8 years. And that day on, my life actually changed completely. I was never the same individual. My students have given me such an immense opportunity to develop into a better person. I have learned from my students more. My students have been my teachers throughout, along the way. It's been a wonderful ride so far. And I'm so very lucky to have worked with giants over here. And I'm, I'm really lucky I've had uh, the privilege of working with Mr. Rahman this year. Amazing people to work with, amazing experiences so far. And I, I would like to mention a few remarkable students that I met and they have literally risen lots of questions. Uh, I think back in the 90s, early 90s, there was this student of mine and we were just finishing our syllabus. And he just came up to me and says that, um, how uh, do you think if I score in hey entry, will you consider me a successful student? Or what if I work really hard for these two years and eventually I don't get a day? Will you be disappointed in me? Or you'll be, you will consider me as not a very successful individual? Um, to be honest, grades do not matter to me. So I gave him some random reply, some really bookish reply, and he knew and I knew both that I just don't mean these words. But I've been looking for the answer since then. And I have had discussed this idea with a number of individuals. Um, then there are certain other questions which were posed along the way. Like, uh, what happens to the people who eventually get lucky in the end? They don't really work that hard during those two years, but eventually they get lucky in the end and they get scores, and people compared to those who actually don't, uh, uh, they take their work so much seriously than the other ones, but eventually they fall there or something happens and luck doesn't favor them and they don't really well score well in the end. So, this, imagine, uh, 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 we, we, I think we have, we have to sort of revisit our educational philosophies because what has been done in the past few years, uh, that there is an insane competition going around. I mean, like, it's not just about students, it's about teachers, it's about parents and the institutes all together involved in this. And we have, enough has been said and written about the objectives of education. And we, 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 we have gone past to a point actually where, where this particular statement is, has sounded started like a cliche that the purpose of education is not to score a grade, the purpose of education is not to aim for a job later on, to make more money, but in fact that is the case. Deep down inside we know that when we are sending our child to a school or when we are teaching a child in school, we have this thing working at the back of our mind that they are studying not for the true spirit of education, they are just studying for a grade. And eventually this grade will earn them a good admission to a university and then later on a good job maybe so that they can make more and more money. I think we go uh, wrong in the very first stage. The perception of education needs to be changed. We have to go back, we have to go back to the very basics. And despite the fact that we all agree on the fact that the purpose of education is not grade or money or job or anything, we believe in that, we strongly believe in that, and we need to change that. And this wrong set of beliefs has caused this insane competition of grades. There are, I remember 
there used to be a rare A initially. It was very difficult to get an A in any subject. Later on, we, we figured out, oh, you find there are A stars now, and now we are working for A stars, then there are distinctions and all, and this is going on and on and on. There's no end to it. And the point is, there's no harm in setting grades as your target. There's no harm in that. The real problem starts when the pursuit of these A's overshadows the true spirit of education, and that is the knowledge and the wisdom which will eventually attract all those A's. A or B, this is not the target, this is the natural outcome of what is being progressed. I mean, this progression is natural, and if you have been honestly, uh, honestly following that path, it is inevitable outcome that you will eventually get an A. Now, what we have done over these years, as teachers, I'm not speaking as a teacher right now. Now, what we have done, that we have mastered the art of getting grades, bypassing the spirit. And we have been training our students just like that. And universities also are involved in the same. Like, I know there are set standards of these quantitative standards set for uh, admissions for universities. Everyone needs to score a certain set of grades in order to be able to qualify to that industry. So usually universities, uh, you, they only take up certain type of students that qualify a certain stage of grades. But this needs to be checked. This needs to be considered, reconsidered, and we need to revive the true spirit of education. I'm speaking I'm speaking on behalf of the faculty as a, as a member of faculty of, uh, of Lacoste, and I think we do understand the true meaning of education. We all do. We all know this. It's just that it's, 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 the right, it's difficult for us to take a step ahead, to step ahead in the right direction. So what I uh, propose now is that we take initiative, and we put an end to this insane race of grades. And we start focusing on what needs to be focused. We need to start teaching the way teaching is meant to be done. We as a nation have been suffering with this illusion. And our wrong educational policies and wrong educational philosophies have led to a distortion in our approach in our everyday life. We see, we see distortion of practices, not just in education, but in industry, in general businesses, even religious practices. We see the same thing. We have, uh, we, 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 we've forgotten, forgotten about the spirit of religion as such. We value everything in quantitative standards, guna, sawal, general closer. We always think in very mechanical language. We do not have, we, we've simply forgotten the spirit itself, uh, the other day I was watching a TV, uh, there was this program. It was about consuming alcohol and why is it forbidden in Islam. And uh, there was somebody who made a very valid argument there. He says, I find it's simple. It's simply you lose control over yourself and you involve, you get yourself in something uh, which causes harms to others, so in order to sort of avoid this harmful act of yours, you need to remain in control of yourself, and that's, what, uh, that's why it's not uh, allowed in Islam. Okay. But the counter-argument I was thinking at that time, that okay, we do not publicly consume alcohol, right? And despite the fact we do everything without consuming alcohol, which for which the, the reasons for which the alcohol has been forbidden. Like if I run, uh, if I run over, uh, if I break the traffic light, let's say, I am becoming a social risk. I'm going to cause so much trouble to others. Like if I am involved in an accident, I am causing a lot more damage than consuming alcohol. I mean, we do not understand that the spirit of alcohol is that you need to secure your environment. You, you can't afford to be a social risk for others. But we do it all the time without consuming alcohol. I mean, we need to fix our values. We need to understand the spirit. Having said so, 
So, how I see, how I see it, um, there is a pathway along which we travel, and then eventually there is a destination. Right? And if we look at it specifically from education perspective, it's the pathway that matters. It's not the end result that matters. Whatever happens at the end, that is a natural outcome of what happens along the pathway. So if we have been honest about our approach on that pathway, it is impossible that we do not get the desired result. But if we target the result, and we don't worry about the pathway, we lose that spirit, we lose all the knowledge and the wisdom that we could have achieved had we fought the pathway with the true spirit. To me, destination is merely the end of accomplishments. Whatever you accomplish, you do it during that progression. And uh, all this uh, has, has been there at a subconscious level. And, 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 and there's this movie I watched a few years back that has helped me. That's a wonderful film. I, I, I recommend everyone uh, to watch this. It's called Kung Fu Panda. It's a great value, entertainment value. It's quality production, animation, awesome. But what really caught my attention over there is the strong subliminal messages which are spread throughout the length of the movie. I would like to share a few scenes of that movie with that, but before I do that, I would like to sort of introduce Po, the Kung Fu Panda, before, before I show it to you. Now, Po, the panda, has a passion for Kung Fu. He loves Kung Fu. And the greatest achievement a Kung Fu fighter can achieve is become a dragon warrior. And that dragon warrior holds the secret or the divine secret of the dragon scroll. Unless you know the secret to the dragon scroll, you will not be able to become dragon warrior. And once you become a dragon warrior, you will have the courage, you will have the strength and the skill to defeat Tai Long the ultimate enemy of uh, Chinese uh, whatever their mythology was. So, uh, Po has not even imagined that he could become the dragon warrior. It doesn't even occur to him because he's not even targeting that. Because he knows that he won't be able to do that. However, Po somehow manages to become dragon warrior. I'm not going to go into that this one for longer than that. So Poe becomes a dragon warrior, and, and, and in order to complete his training, he, has, he must gain access to the dragon scroll. And the best part is what happens when he gets the dragon scroll. So that's the ultimate achievement for any kind of fight. Please give me the one. The dragon scroll has nothing to it. It's just black. All you see is your own reflection. Again, Kung Fu Panda is a religion that means there's a very strong moral behind that. You become the dragon warrior on the pathway. The sacred scroll doesn't do anything additional to you. It just is blank. It just gives you that self-belief that you need. So eventually, whenever A's or B's you're targeting, they're just acknowledgement of what you have achieved. This is not the target. This, that's just blank dragon scroll. All you have to do is, if you, if you want to become dragon, all you have to follow the pathway. There is nothing to that. We have to do whatever we do for the right reasons. We educate ourselves, we, we, we send our children to our school. If we run a school, if, if I go to a class and give a lecture, I need to understand what is the right reason, what I'm doing for it. So what are the right reasons? That's a, that's a big question, in fact, and there, there's no clear answer to what is the right reason. If I'm coming to a class and giving a lecture, I have to do it for the right reasons. This is very subjective. I mean, if if if, if, if you ask someone what is the right reason, they could be they could come up with any sort of explanation. But the perception naturally, since it is very subjective, it changes. 
So I naturally don't have an answer to that. I should be. There is no hard and fast standardized answer to what is the right reason for doing whatever we do. I would like to conclude my speech over here by quoting Hazrat Ali that um, once he spoke about his faith. And he says that I believe in God not for the incentive of heaven, for that would be a trade and not faith. I do not believe in God out of fear either, for that would be slavery and not faith. I believe in him because he's the only one worthy of being worshipped. Now, I don't know whether uh, this quotes authenticity and not particularly religious either that uh, it doesn't really matter to me about the authenticity of this quote. It's the message that is there. I mean, if I'm looking for the right reasons, I see a very clear distinction there. Take away the fear of a loss. Take away the expectation, expectation or incentive of a reward. And yet, if you think that you will do whatever you're doing, I'm sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Since your decision is not dictated by the incentive of a reward or the fear of a loss, and you're doing it, you're doing it for the right reasons, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Mr. Vikal isn't sitting over here, he will understand, he will endorse my view. Because I'm sure he is a wonderful musician, he's one of my favorites, and I can confidently say that he's one of the best guitarists, not in Pakistan, but in the world. I can say that. And I'm sure when he was learning to play guitars, there was no incentive for him. There was no fear of loss for him. He did it. He did it out of an incentive of reward. He did it out of fear of it. Yes, sir. Am I right? Right. And I, I, I believe, I believe that whatever I have achieved so far, and whatever I have been consistently working on, if I look back at my life, music or teaching or whatever, only those things which I did out of an incentive of a reward or a fear, I'm still doing those. And I'm proud of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much.